Hello and welcome on Watches TV and today we are going to focus on a new collection introduced very recently by Romain Gauthier called the Continuum and though it bears this name it nevertheless represents some slight rupture with some of his previous pieces and we'll understand better why with the man himself. But as we had the nice opportunity of being on site where we will also come back in the second part of this video on Romain's uh, journey, born in the Valley de Joux, technical school but not necessarily what you might expect, his first working experiences and his entrepreneurial spirit, well you'll get to know him much better, his vision, his quest, but first let's discover this new line which now represent the entry level into Romain Gauthier's world with this sportier and everyday watch aspect if we can say so. So let's go! The Continuum uh, is for me an incredible reflection. Um, 16 years in watchmaking when I, uh, I established the brand. Um, 21 years when I started to think about to do something in watchmaking with my MBA and 46 years because I'm born here. I started with how should be a watch that a lot of people will appreciate. So not an engineer watch not something that you have to explain why it's comfortable, why it's beautiful and, and all of that. So the challenge was in terms of aesthetic. The challenge was in terms of design, in terms of why to do that. And I was working a lot with the ergonomy, you know, the thinking about what do you like first, it's that. The continuum uh, is an hour minute second with stop balance. Uh, the stop balance was uh, uh, to take the design of the logical one with a snail cam. Yes. So when you pull out the crown, there is a snail cam who turn and then with a rotation. So then when you have set the time and you uh, place the crown at the, at the right position to wind, uh, it's going to turn. So the balance will always, you know, have a certain uh, uh, help and inertia to always start. So that was not just to touch, but also to create a, a rotation. Um, more than 60 hours of power reserve, 50 meters of power resistance, uh, 41 millimeters, uh, 9.55. Uh, that was, you know, uh, really important. The build and the ar architecture about the movement is quite solid. I like uh, that kind of, uh, of engineering. I love titanium. You know, it's light, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's resistant, it's a metal made for long last, you know. I started with the, the, the Prestige HMS in titanium in 2011, and then with the logical one, we use it more and more the mat. Yes. So, for example, on the continuum, you have the beveling, is a very smooth, smooth mat. And this is achieved not just by machining and sandblasting, in no way, it's not that. It's, uh, behind to obtain that uh, almost perfection in terms of smooth mat, there is also the handmade, there is also the hand value uh, with the, the paper buff, with the beveling, and it's quite a long process, you know. And I love the mat because you have a contrast. When you see the back of the continuum with the, the gears and uh, the, the finishing that we have, it literally pops. The idea for me, you know, is really to open for sure, probably with new profile of client. Uh, not necessarily, you know, the, the highest collector as we have, because the watch is simple. It's going probably, and I'm sure, to open roads and horizons for us, uh, for a new profile uh, of client. So next year, yes, you will have, uh, you will have uh, two other editions that will arrive. Um, one uh, with a different metal, with uh, the same approach, the continuum of uh, uh, generation, how to be sure, how to take the security that what we do will go for 
centuries, you know, and uh, and this is uh, is one of the one of the metal and a mix of metal that we'll achieve. So if we go by the orders place, well, we can already say that this watch has found its place, and the new versions, uh, which will come out in the next few months, are almost all sold out. That's quite crazy, but I'm very happy for him and his team. And I just wanted to add that I had the chance of wearing this piece for a little while, and it's just extremely comfortable on the wrist. Just sits nicely to the point that you almost forget having it on. So all right, but now let's go back in more details on who is Romain Gauthier, his philosophy and how he's set up. I'm born in the Vallée de Joux. I have seen, you know, watches and from different uh, wonderful brands uh, since like this. And uh, my background is, uh, is, uh, is related with mechanism, with mechanic. But when I started, you know, the, the technical school in the Vallée de Joux, I started with uh, in electronic because my biggest passion was uh, music. So I started with electronic and then I discovered that mechanic speak to me, you know, and, uh, and uh, uh, electronic was too abstract. After the military school, uh, I came back to, in a company, that was my first job, uh, to produce parts of watches. And everything started like this. A year and a half after, I said to myself, Romain, look, you born in the Vallée de Joux. You have a, a technical background, engineer, how to build machinery in, in, in that sense. And now you know how to build, to produce parts of watches. So why you don't imagine to create your own movement? If you want to do something in the future, you need to understand business. You need to understand what is finance, economy, marketing. And uh, this is why I did an MBA between 2000 and 2002. The first caliber, it was, it, it was, uh, not complicated, I started with a simple movement, hour, minute. So hopefully the collector really liked this approach. Is a young one with an introduction in the, that level of watchmaking with his own caliber developed by him. But the watch really create for us uh, a starting was the logical one. You know, a, a logical one for me was a challenge for myself. It's why I place so much pressure on me to be able to develop something with a complication, with a sense, and also with a level of, of finishing that will be also uh, uh, an evolution. And for me, at that time, that was clear that it was necessary to work on something not just classical and not just contemporary. From that time, um, I was more free free to, to create, to develop. And my philosophy is really, like I said, the value and the future will, will be better and with less risk if you can be autonomous. Uh, and the fact that you are able to create something, but you also are able to produce, to uh, finish, to decorate, to assembly and to deliver. The goal was to go until Philippe Dufour. And uh, I did the mapping with the position of the brands, uh, every brand, and Philippe was always for me, for example, the, the target, you know. And we do also patent, we do also a, a development, because this is a kind of proof for me that um, we need to continue to turn the wheel of watchmaking. When we received the, the Grand Prix de Genève in 2013 for the men's complication, that was for me not just a prize, it was a, a big, green light to say, Romain, you were waiting an answer if you have to continue. Now you got the answer, so let's, let's continue. Okay, well, I hope you found this interesting. And as a quick side note, I can really remember when that uh, logical one came out and the impression it left me, it was kind of this, wow, what's this thing, you know? But I'm glad that, that they uh, are expanding the variety of watches, makes it a little bit more accessible, both in terms of price point, but also making it a little bit less complex. A true time only and a to the point watch which are with a personality nonetheless. So the very best to you. Thanks for watching. See you real soon and viva watchmaking!